So tonight is a lecture about prolotherapy, which is P-R-O-L-O therapy, one word, that stands for proliferation of tissue. So what my specialty is, among other things, is prolotherapy. What is it? It's an injection series into a certain part of the body. Had there not been metal in this lady's ankle, I would have injected into the area of her pain. Because there was metal there, I want to make sure that I'm not drawing bacteria to the area with the needle, with the tip of the needle that goes through skin, even if I use something that makes it very sanitary and safe, because we never want to take a chance on infecting anyone. The first law of medicine for every doctor is do no harm. Okay? So I deal with a lot of people who come in with pain. What is pain? It's defined as an unpleasant sensory, that means you can feel it, an emotional experience associated with actual or potential tissue damage are described in terms of such damage. Very simple. A lot of people come in and I wonder why they're experiencing pain when what I see that what they have is very minimal and there can be an emotional response. Different races feel pain differently. When I was in college, I spent a great bit of time studying the Bene Bene tribe in New Guinea, okay? Aborigines, the women worked in the field digging for yams. That was their main food source. And when they were pregnant, they continued to work. When they were about to deliver a baby, they would dig a little hole. They would have the baby in the hole. They could catch the baby, hand it to a younger girl, and they would continue working in the field. They had no pain of childbirth. So we're accustomed to know that childbirth is the most painful thing that anyone could go through. But their culture doesn't have that. There's other um, cultures I've worked with that feel no pain. Some cultures I work with have extreme pain without any noticeable elicitation that should cause it. It's all pain. You, know, you can't discount someone's pain because it doesn't seem like it should be there. So the emotional experience is very, very high with a lot of people. What is acute pain? Anyone know what acute pain is? Is it the bad kind of pain when you say, ooh, it's really acute? Not really. Acute means the timeliness of the injury. So acute means new. What we're describing is an injury that just happened within the last two or three months. Now, an acute injury can be a very minimal injury. If someone pokes me on the shoulder like that, I might say that's an acute injury. It's not a bad injury, but I felt it. It could hurt for a day or so. Chronic pain is pain that lasts for more than two or three months, or whatever definition a doctor uses, but that's pretty typical. We want to get rid of acute pain before it becomes chronic. We can deal with acute pain very efficiently if we catch it very quickly. Once it becomes chronic, it may become lifelong. Now, the typical kind of thing we see that is so prominent in a city like Los Angeles because there's so much traffic is what we call whiplash. Anyone here have a whiplash injury? Okay, pretty common. I've had several. And whiplash doesn't mean you have to be in a car. I've had whiplash injuries from gymnastics, skiing, uh, surfing, you name it. It just means an acceleration, deceleration of the head, which is on a fairly thin neck for the big head that's there. And the muscles aren't very strong to hold it. So we get this whip action. When we're hit from behind in a car, we have acceleration backwards. The car is moving forwards. The head goes backwards. And then it whips forward. Okay. Now, if we can't get rid of that pain very quickly, a person can end up with chronic pain. So we like to treat very aggressively right away. If you have a new injury, treat it aggressively. Try to get rid of it before it becomes chronic. Once it becomes chronic, we can end up with incurable or intractable medical condition or disease. And a lot of these chronic pain states are terrible because it's not just the pain we suffer from. Typically, doctors will give us many kinds of different medications to sedate us, called narcotics. They don't work because they're not supposed to be used on chronic pain. They're supposed to be used on acute pain. So if someone comes into my office, I may give them two or three days of a narcotic, something like Vicodin or Tylenol with codeine, just to get them over the hump so they can sleep for a couple days until the main injury that they have kind of abates a little bit. But when it gets into someone, get, anyone here on narcotic medicine, if you don't mind saying? 
Okay, a couple people. Um, typically what happens with narcotics is that the more you take, the more you need because the receptor sites become disengaged from the nervous system. They actually die. Receptor sites are actually proteins. And when they're bombed with different medications, you need more medications. So you become what's called tolerant. Any of you who take a narcotic notice that you've needed more over time? Yeah. And then what happens if we take narcotics is we end up with a depressed consciousness. The CNS, or central nervous system, the brain and the spinal cord start to shut down. So people start to get depressed. Another side effect, constipation. Not a good thing to have when you're in pain. So we have to be very careful. Doctors often give out anti-seizure medications, things like Neurontin, Cymbalta. They give out anti-inflammatory medications. You've heard of um, you know, ibuprofen. You've heard of Celebrex. They took Vioxx off the market because it causes heart attack or is associated with heart attacks. Um, there's just a whole different type of thing that goes on once we start taking these medications. I'm not a believer in medication. Sometimes they work. Most of the time they don't work. One of the things I try to do with patients who come in with a lot of medications is once they gain my trust, I will slowly wean them off. Benzodiazepines, that's another one. Things like Valium that are taken for muscle spasm, extremely addictive. They stay in your body for about six months after you stop taking them. So if anyone is on medications they want to wean off, check with your doctor. Some have to be taken off very, very slowly or you go through terrible withdrawal for months. Pain management, systematic study of clinical and basic science and its application for the reduction of pain and suffering. Well, these are terms, but what do they really mean? There's a lot of societies of pain management and they do things from a very cerebral point of view. My point of view is fix the pain, fix the underlying condition. Most doctors don't know how to do that, so that's why they're using all these programs. There's a lot of different pain programs. They don't really do a whole lot of good for people. There's psychological counseling. If you're not getting down to where the pain is being generated from, not from what your MRI shows, your X-ray, your CT scan, to me that's almost meaningless. It's what I do with my hands that tells me where the pain is coming from, how I move your body around to find out where the pain is coming from, not from an MRI. Why is that? Because MRIs don't tell you where your pain is coming from. They show anatomical deficiencies or abnormalities, but that doesn't mean you have pain because you have that. In this age group that we're in here, which is pretty much the same, probably more than half of us have disc problems in our back. How many people here have back pain? Raise your hand if you do. Okay, so it's less than half but more than half have disc problems, if you want to call it a problem. It's a problem on an MRI because we've done studies. Doctors will take patients off the street who have zero back pain, do imaging. They're going to find rotator cuff tears in the shoulder, meniscal tears in the knee, herniated discs, all kinds of things, degenerative arthritis, um, disc disease, meaning the discs are starting to smush down, all kinds of problems, but they're not problems for that person. And we've done autopsy studies also. A lot of studies on these where we will do an autopsy on a patient who never had any pain in their life and find out that they have all these problems. So be careful. If there's one real good take-home message for tonight, be very careful. Your doctor doesn't diagnose you based on a diagnostic film. Does that make sense? I know it's kind of backwards thinking because that's the way we're raised. And I spend sometimes a half hour or an hour with people educating to the fact that they are, not, they are not a herniated disc. They are not their MRI. They're not their X-ray. They're a human being. We're all different. We all experience things differently. And you need to see some doctor who's going to find out what's going on with you. You need to see a doctor who can spend the time who's going to find out what's going on. So again, this is the cerebral method of pain management. You know, I don't even know what this stuff means, really. I put it up here because I want to see what, I want you to see what I have to do when I'm in a university teaching this to doctors. That's what they want to hear. They want a structure. Good medicine is not about structure. It's about finding out the underlying thing under the symptoms, 
not getting to a symptom and getting to a diagnosis.